Hello, in this tutorial we are going to use spline curves to generate hair using Ornatrix for Cinema 4D. In this scene I have three objects, the spline curves, a scalp to generate the hair and the full body. As you can see the scalp is just a mesh extraction of the main body mesh but make sure that the scalp have proper UVs because we are going to paint some texture maps to tweak the hair. So to start select the spline curves and click add hair. In the select groom window select hair from curves. This preset will add all the necessary modifiers to generate hair from your curves. Select hair from curves and click create. Now a new hair object has been created. If you expand this object, you will find three modifiers below it. Guides from curves, which is the modifier used to generate the guides, the Ornatrix guides from the curves. Ground strands will ground the generated guides to the scalp, so you will be able to generate hair from those guides. And change width is the modifier that will set the width, the thickness of the hair strands. For now, we are not going to need this one. Going back to guides from curves, here you can see how the guides, the blue lines, are not actually following the curves, the black lines. This is because by default, they don't have enough guide points. So we have to increase the point count to give the guides enough resolution to conform to the curves. Increase the point count value until the guides conform to the curves. Now we have to ground the guides to the scalp to be able to generate the hair. For that, go to the ground strands modifier, ground tab, and click and drag your scalp mesh to the distribution mesh field. Now click attach roots. This will attach the roots of the guides to the scalp. So when you move the scalp, the hair will move with it. Now we are ready to generate the hair. To generate the hair, add the hair from guides modifier next to ground strands. As you can see, the hair is generated on the whole scalp, but in some cases, you want to remove hair from certain areas of the head. To fix that, we are going to paint a distribution map or a multiplier map that we are going to connect in the distribution multiplier slot. The distribution multiplier map is a black and white map where we can define the areas where we don't want hair. Areas painted in black will not scatter any hair. To load the map, click on this arrow and then load image. Now, as you can see, the hair is only generated on the white areas of the texture map. When grooming human hair, hair interpolation is very important. To get the best hair interpolation, you need two things. One is a distribution map, we already have that. And the other is define the parting line. If we turn off hair from guides, you will notice that we have a division in the middle, represented with the guides. This division is our parting line. And we have to define this parting line in the hair from guides modifier as well. So this modifier will take that into account when generating and interpolating the hair. This is to avoid hairs crossing from one side to the other and ruining the parting. For that, we go to the parting tab and use the add parting button to define the parting. Now we click and drag on the surface to draw the planes like this. And you will notice how the hair interpolation is being recomputed to divide, to separate the hair in the middle. All right, now you can take it from here and continue adding and stacking other operators to create interesting effects on your hair. For example, you can add clumps, freeze, curls or any other effect that you want. Just for the sake of completion, I'm going to add some clumping and some frizz to the hair. But to learn more about clumping, watch our clumping video where we talk about clumping, subclumping, and clumping with parting. This is all for this video. See you in the next. Thank you for watching.